Welcome back. One evil genius has fallen. We're about to find out if the second one can advance and at least stay in Kode. Yeah, the next evil genius that we are going to cast is, of course, also a foreigner. It is going to be a Protoss player. It is going to be a Huck. And yep. he is up against Shine, not the former TSL player. Right. Don't be confused. Now, here's what happens to Lore. He's actually going to play against the winner of LGIM's Bill versus Effort. That'll be, of course, in the next round of Code A. The winner of that, of course, moves on against whoever gets third in the round of 16 of Code S. But don't get too bogged down in that. That's going to happen a little bit later. But we talked about Jadon's match a little bit earlier. The Huck is going to be playing the opposite matchup. He's a pros. He's playing against a Kespa Zerg. And uh, we don't really know too much about Shine. He hasn't been playing for a long time. We have him with a couple of appearances in Pro League, where he was playing uh, against the Trap twice. He won one of the matches and he lost the second one in the best of one style. We have him with the 2 1 over weekend in the GSL Code A qualifier. And now he's up against Suck, a player that, of course, has hundreds of games under his belt. Yeah, this guy has practiced so much. I remember uh, during the beta, I think he was ranked one in total points for the majority of the beta because he played so much and he won so many games. This guy practices so much and he's, he's doing really well in practice. I talked to uh, Slog, someone who lives with him currently, and he says he's been preparing really well for his matches. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to show us today. This, this matchup historically has been a little bit shaky for him, but we'll see. He doesn't look too bad against Sniper in uh, Code S. He took one That's of true. the maps. He only lost with a 2-1. Uh, it was close. Now he's up against the Zerg player that we haven't heard too much from. But Shine, he's someone you shouldn't underestimate. And it's also very hard to prepare for him because he can't just look up data. He can't look up a lot of VODs. You have two or three games that you can watch where you can get an idea a little bit of what kind of player he is. But it's not like you can suddenly analyze all the maps and see what specific style he's playing on. Yeah, and if you turn the card around, Shine yeah. can look up everything. He can look up Huck's playstyle from seasons of Code A from 2010 if he wants to. Or I suppose 2011, whichever one he wants. Day it's probably better. <laughs> it's a little bit more contemporary. Probably. Daybreak is our first map today in this matchup. Let's see what Huck is going to do. Huck's hairstyle looking a little bit messy in there. Well, He's got that, I just woke up from bed and I'm ready to play GSL Code A hairstyle. No, nah, that's more the hairstyle. I had a perfect hairstyle and then I put on a headset. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's that actually... be a couple of times. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, your hair gets totally whacked out uh, yeah, gets, when you put the headset on. It gets so messed up. You guys I, only see Calder with the headset on, generally speaking. You can look at some interviews of Calder, you can see how his hair normally looks actually much better. But when he puts yeah. his headset on, things get... I'm sorry to say, your hair looks a little bit weird right now. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I need to, you gotta be really careful when you put the headset on. You don't want to mess it up. I need to watch it again. Alright, let's start. Huck! versus Shine, Protoss versus Zerg here at the GSL Code with Calder and Wolf. And our foreigner starts to the bottom left of Daybreak here at the GSL Code A in the first round. We have starting for the Evil Geniuses. Yi Ji Hook, Lady Core. Of course he also gets his Lady Call here. Yeah. The sad thing is since Jadong is already done for the day, the Lady's back. They're chasing him down right now. Yeah, they're all just crying with him, and and they're in the lobby probably. He's just trying to go home and accept his loss. Yeah, another Zerg player might get a win today though. Starting to the top right for Samsung Khan, we have a player that has not. Samsung Khan shine. You know that intro couldn't wait. Batman. That was Street Fighter voice. We have to have a talk later on. Yeah, so we haven't had too many games that we can rely on. Not a, a lot of data about Shine. This is, of course, not the former TSL Shine. We talked about that already earlier. But yeah, we're going to find out how Shine is going to present himself today. Yeah, we'll find out indeed. So far, just looking at his uh, Code B, or uh, Code A qualifier games and Pro League games, he's 3-3 against Protoss. Yeah, That's all so we know about him. You know, clearly not a master of the matchup, but at the same time, still having enough fluency to get through. Huck goes for the Nexus first. Nothing like too out of the ordinary for Daybreak so far. He will be able to block the hatchery with his probe for a little bit of time. This is just a slight annoyance for Shine. Nothing he hasn't dealt with a thousand times over in Brugor anyways. Yeah, the block here not perfect for Huck. Tries to block, of course, the hatchery for as long as possible. And 
Hak in Code S when he played, well, first of all in the up and downs, he played a very, very strong up and down season, was doing well, but he lost against the only Zerg player, he lost against Nesty. Then we had him playing against another Zerg in Code S where he had to face Sniper. And even though he lost the best of three, he played quite well and he won one of the maps against the champion. So definitely something that you can be proud of. Now he's in the first round of Code A and if he loses then he will suffer the same fate as Jadok and drop down to Kabir being out of the GSL. This is what is at stake here. Yeah, this is definitely what's at stake here. You know, a lot of people are very controversial about who gets Code S spots and you know, that's why the wildcard group from Karsu was one of the reasons why it was introduced. But Huck got an up and down spot. He did extremely well, got into Code S, but he fell right out. And that's the scary part of getting fourth in your group is going down to the first round of Code A, where you may find yourself out of the GSL. And if you need a reminder, go look at the Code A qualifier bracket. How many players are in it, first of all? Who's in it? And who qualified and who didn't qualify? Just to remind yourself that if Huck falls out or if Shine falls out, what they're going to have to go through next season. It's insane. It's its nothing anybody wants to go through ever. It's one of the... It's, it's an emotional experience for sure. The qualifiers are crazy and it's really... I mean, every single time we are there, it's intense. And you did coverage this time. I was still in Germany, but I was following your tweets and having a look at who actually made it out of there and all those results. I was quite happy about quite a lot of them, but for example, seeing Lucky not able to qualify again. I like the guy and he's always in the finals, but then he loses. So it's its really tough. Code Air qualifier is tough. Yeah. You know, we had a lot of unique players trying to qualify this season as well. Thorzane, for example, tried to qualify. We had Artosis even try to qualify. And just, it, you know, as a foreigner especially, most players are just not able to even take a single set. At this point, Huck is transitioning normally. His core is done. We're going to find out what sort of tech he wants, what he's got planned in just a moment. He's got the gas now. And also one of the things that I just want to highlight for a second, it's not the same matchup, but I talked a little bit about Shine's success against the weekend in the Kodak qualifier. But in the final, he had to face MMA. And he took him out without dropping a map. Yeah. So MMA, of course, a bit of in a position now uh, at a time where he is not on the same level as he was back in the days when he was rocking Godeth. But still, we have him at this point still a former champion. And you know, for Shine, this is quite the accomplishment. So you should not underestimate this guy. And I'm pretty sure that this is some, a mistake that Huck won't make. Yeah, Huck will not mistake, uh, mistake him for a weaker player. And, you know, for MMA fans, remember that Shine is the reason why MMA is not in Code A right now playing against Huck himself. Although we have MMA versus Huck at this moment. Nice, gets the overload. Yeah, that's wow. really good. And he so far has been able to deny the scouting information of the Stargate. He has no idea. It's going to be Phoenix's first. And he wants to hide them. Like this. So you can't overwhelm your opponent. Let's see if Shine is expecting this. And here come the added gateways to lend a little bit of ground pressure to this. And the plus one attack upgrade. Now Shine taking some more gas. You know, the problem for Shine really is that he doesn't have scouting information. There are no additional overloads in the vicinity that he could use that could scout. And he doesn't really know anything. We have him now with the Evolution Chamber, the normal timing, he gets the extra roaches out there. So I'm really interested to see how he's playing this because at this point, is he just going for aggression? It's like, okay, well, whatever you do, I'm just going for it. And it certainly looks like it with him completely stopping building drones, but on the other hand, he's already at 59. It looks like, I think he's just a little bit concerned. He wants to make sure, no matter what Huck is doing, he's ready. He's seen Huck's play, does a lot of all-ins, actually, when he plays in tournaments. Not that he's an all-in-ish player, but he pulls the all-ins out usually at least once in a series, and that's something you have to be prepared for, and this is something he's probably been able to study. A lot of Blink Stalker all-ins from Huck, sometimes gateway pressure, you know, even a 6 game might come out, so... He's, he's actually going to pressure Huck, find out what he's doing. Meanwhile, back at home, he's teching to Lair. So this is not all in by Shine. But if he doesn't do any damage here, then Huck is definitely going to have a lead. He just missed the pile on Shine, that is. He just does not know about the pile. It was close. But here comes the aggression. He's moving in. He's trying to. He's getting it in with a few Zerpling. He's actually getting it with quite a lot of he them. He wants to get that core, and he may very well. It's going to be close. The Roaches, if they target, he should be able to get the core. It's going to be so close. He warps in four centuries, though. He does not attack with the Roaches. He only attacked with the Zerplings, but he's going to get it either way. And now this is the end of the stalkers. He can't get stalkers and he can't get sentries anymore. Yeah, that's why Huck made those four sentries right before the core died because he knew he would likely lose it. Nice control here by Huck. Really well done. He needs to rebuild that core immediately though. 
with the timing that Shine hit here, he did not face plus one attack. This is the reason why he could get the core without the plus one attack. Without the plus one attack upgrade, it's possible with the plus one attack upgrade, the Zerglings wouldn't have been able to do this much damage against the Zealots that were trying to protect it. That was a decent trade for Huck at that pylon since he had plus one though, since it is now finished. And Huck has to now make tough choices. Where does he go next? He's gonna go for some harassment, try to pick off overlords. It looks like he sends one Phoenix in the main to scout. Really nicely done. He's adding a bunch of gateways. This is the type of play we're talking about. You've got to prepare for as a Zerg player. You never know when Hux is going to add a bunch of gateways to try to kill you. Shine has to be careful now with his overlords. And yes, you're right. If Huck is going for all-out aggression, and this is a style that we've seen him do in the past, then Shine has to be prepared. And currently, he's struggling with his supply. He's getting additional overlords. And he wants to have the Overseer. He wants to know what's going on. Hack is going for the third base, at least he's dropping the next. Yeah. have a quick look at his harvest account, 53, and he's still continuing to build probes. Doesn't look like he's fully committing to an attack now. Yeah, he's also getting the robotics as well here. Let's not forget, this is not a massive amount of gateways, it's a decent amount. It gives him the opportunity to go for an attack if he wants to, but he was likely going to take the third. It looks like he wants to anyways. That cancel was really important, by the way. That was well done by Shine. He immediately saw, okay, expansion. Running in with the Zerglings, mobile task force, only one job, force a cancel on the third, just delayed a bit. Overseer on the main base as well sees everything, he's seeing a great scout, you're even going to fly into the natural now, see if we can find some additional tech, we'll finally see that robotics. These Void Rays are so useful, I really love when players do this, keep a Void Ray near the Watchtower, it makes a Zerg player unable to sit in one place, it's got to uh -oh, move. Oh, but he can't control the choke point here, and the wall in has to be cancelled as the pilot goes down, here comes the rest of the sentries with the Guardian Shield, we have Boro, and there is no detection just yet, he's Trona boosting his first observer, and now Shine is in a position where he ha he doesn't have any units yeah. to follow this up, so he has to make sure that he at least trades more sufficiently. Yeah, and you know these Burrow moves are, are cute and all, but he's, he's got to do something. He's making the best out of these roaches, because even though he just sits there, the Observer's going to be out eventually, he's going to lose the roaches for free, so he's going to try to trade them for something, but he Huck did. takes the supply lead here, and now he's got the third base. Shine needs that fourth, and he needs the Hive Tech to be started. Huck lost a couple of sentries in the last attack though, and this was the one thing that Shine could do, and which he did. He borrowed his units, Huck moved forward, Shine realized, hey, I'm close enough to kill your sentries, unburrowed and started to snipe them, so at least he got a bit... He didn't waste those units. Helmer. It was not the trade that he wanted, but still. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think we're going to see Mutas out of Shine, because he doesn't have an infestation, He's but he banged. saved a thousand gas. Yeah. This is weird, considering that not only does Huck have Phoenixes, but Huck is actually really good at defending Mule's play. I think one of the best players in the world at it. But I'm not quite sure Ooh. if he's going to expect it. And now suddenly look at this Nexus. On the Nexus, he needs Whoa. a force field. This could be... This Ooh. is going to kill him. No he needs a force field. field. Oh! oh! 64 hit points. <laughs> yeah, well, you can... Well, think about what those Mutalists are going to do in first. Well, that's... <laughs> I think the answer is going to be clear. I think Huck's going to have to camp on this Nexus for a little while and keep his Phoenixes ready to intercept any possible aggression. And this is horrible for him. As you said, he has to camp the Nexus, which leaves his main base completely exposed. It also keeps him away from the fourth base of Shine, while Shine is going to potentially tech now into investors. And there is no information for, uh, for Huck. If Shine runs now, in, flies into the main base and has a couple of units at the third, this is all that he needs. Yeah, the thing is, even if he makes that wall against Lings and Roaches, the base is still going to be exposed to Mita, so Huck now makes very difficult choices over how he splits his units He knows up. it. He knows it, though. He knows that they are Mutalists. They have just been uh, spotted, and here they come into the main base. He's perfect in the at the third base as well. He's got the Phoenix in play. Can he micro them? Well, he actually flies through the Mutas. Yeah, but here come those Zerglings and they pick up a Sentry or two, but in the end, they're not going to do too much damage. My the god, though, his, his multitasking here is insanely good. He not only micros the Phoenix decently well, it picks off those Mutas, keeps them out of the main, but keeps his third base alive as well. Trades well against the Roaches. Huck, barely even in supply. And Wolf, actually, to be honest with you, he can just go for it because yeah. he has the perfect up composition against this. Exactly, and Blink is about to finish. Loses the sentry here, nicely done by Shine, but Huck could really hit this fourth base and hit it hard. I don't think there's much Shine can do about this. Not for the units that he has. Mutalists alone are not going to win him in this fight against this many stalkers. And those mortals make sure that roaches are not going to be an issue. He's trying to go for a base race now a little bit. Yeah. He wants to go in because he realizes this army, I can't beat it, I have to do something else. Yeah, Huck has a decent amount of cans at his third base, but not so much in the main base. He sends his stalkers back and sends only the sentries and zealots forward. This is a great choice by Huck. He's sniping the core again. No more stalkers. No There's more so stalkers. Many cannons. He loses a ton of mutas here. 
he needs to get he more mutilus. He back. needs to get more mutilus as fast as possible. At this point, Huck can't put you stalkers anymore. He can't. Yeah, he needs to make remake a core. And you know, he doesn't have a lot of anti-air here, so the Mutas, when they get home, they should easily be able to kill this many easily. sentries, zealots, and immortals. They can't shoot upwards. The sentries are all gonna die, and so will the immortals. He needs to move in! He needs to move in, and the overlords actually as bait here. Not intentionally, but they are making sure they're that those stalkers are not gonna in. Exactly, they're slowing down. And that gives Shine more time to get mutalisms. He doesn't kill the Roach Warren either, but the Roach Warren, of course, not too useful in this case. Luck. Huck took a good a good choice at first, but he was not able to get his stalkers over there because of the overlords. Now Shine is in a great spot. He's in an awesome spot. Look at these units. We have 26 mutalists already against 24 stalkers. He's the getting core more and more. is now just being started, whereas Shine is building more and more mutalists. And Huck is the only thing that he can do. The only thing he's getting cannons. Yeah, that's all he can do. Two more cannons going up right now. He's got a ton of cannons at his third base. He needs to protect his natural now. That's where he's most vulnerable, I feel. He has a lot of zealots coming through because, of course, he has to. He doesn't have much other choice of what units he can build. Hawk with a good unit composition that was going for it. Shine realizing that he had no chance in a direct fight. Goes Went for the, the counter attack. No sniping his opponent's building. No sentries left. No force The field. zealots are the not at the front. At the front, and exactly the zealots are not where they are. Now he has them, but you know, I think he may have too many mutas. He doesn't fight the stalkers directly, he doesn't decide to go for that, goes for probes and says he's just gonna fly over your magic box, the probes for a second, then fly out, doing a ton of economic damage. Very few meters lost here. Uh, and now he can turn around and fight. Only a few stalkers are blinking up, but he doesn't even have to. He knows if he plays a safe game here, if he just continues his mutilous production and goes for the upgrades, he's gonna be fine. Yeah, Huck just does not have the economy now that he's lost that third base. That's the base that had the most mineral patch. The natural is getting about halfway mined out. The main is basically mined out. He's even gonna go for probes on the main, even though it's basically mined. And this is what's important. Never underestimate a player like this. Huck didn't really, he made good decisions, but a few of the choices let just... Shine had the opportunity to go in, Hawk didn't have anything to protect his natural, he didn't have the cannons that a parting it would build. Parting before moving out would drop all these cannons, Hawk didn't, he went for it, he knew he had the better army composition, he had the stronger army, but in a base race scenario, you the have more have mobile force yeah. is just superior. And if Hawk had all of his army together, he would have been able to fight the Zerg base, if Shine turns his meters around, then he has an army he can fight the Mutas with at the Zerg main, but if he has only Zealots, Sentries, and Immortals there, the Mutas are going to take that fight any day after doing damage because they're more mobile, like you said. Storm could change things again in Huck's favor. He has the Temple Archon. Look at his gas. He, has, he could make a ton of Archons, for example, if he wants to. Yeah. With a good Archon count, it's also worth it, and he's going for the Archons. If you only have one or two, that doesn't really help you all too much because with good magic boxing, you can take them out really fast. But if you have a lot of Stalkers, which he does, and then you have the Archons is in the Addition, that is definitely because very, very dangerous. not only are the Archons good against Mutas, they're also good against Lynx, and that's the composition he faces here. If he goes for a big attack now... Oh, he's losing too many Stalkers. Where are the Archons? They're not with the army. He's going across the map with them instead. This is a good composition for Huck. He can still take this game. This is not going to be easy, though. This is basically his last chance. This is just a numbers game, and uh, the more Mutalisks we have, the more difficult it is for Huck to prevail, especially when he can't attack with his entire force. But the Archons, they are going to be key here. That is... And they have plus three counter. The Mutas yes. don't have any Carapace. They have plus one attack. They're about to have plus two. He's getting nine additional ones. Oh, Calder, this is actually is a fight that Shine probably does not want to take. He needs no. to avoid this army. He needs to use his mobility. Use the mobility, exactly. Dodge the army for now and go in again. Let those let those spine crawlers deal with it. The spine crawlers and the Zerglings try to buy time, get more Mutalists out and go for a base race scenario. That is his best choice here. Okay, so sends the Stalkers back. Archons go for the attack. He's getting more Archons at home, he's getting them at his third base where he's got the uh, the cannons already up. I don't think that the Stalk is alone, I actually the answer. If he waits for the rest of the Mutalists to join this main force, then he has so many Mutalists that he can take down the Stalk, as I feel. Huck is doing so good with this attack so far, though. He's getting, ripping through the production, and Shine is, is running low on Mutalists. He has that new base at the bottom right, he's starting to make Spine Cores there. That's exactly what he needs to do. He's the Mutalists here. He's a fly block and he lost way too many viewers. He lost oh. so many, but here comes the rest of them and suddenly the Stalkers, they're completely outnumbered. Yeah, Nine way against too many Mutas now. He needs a few Archons to support, but he doesn't have them. And suddenly, Hark is in a position where he also doesn't really have a lot of resource anymore. He can warp in a few more Stalkers, but no, he can't. He actually lost his core again. Yeah, he needs Templar. He needs, he needs more Archons. The Archons on the main base here are actually starting to get whittled down a little bit as well. 
And there's way too many spines. At the final base of Shine to the bottom right, there are already seven spine crawlers. Spawning pool being remade, Spire being remade. Before he loses his lair. Before he loses the lair, he drops another Spire. And he just needs to continue to mine a few minerals and then expand all over the map. He has the resources. His army is just so fast. 65 army supply against 35. It's too much. You know, I have to say, Huck has the ability to oftentimes take a game that looks impossible and make it look just for at least a few moments quite winnable. He wants to fight these Venus with the Archons if he can, but he can't fight those spine crawlers, and he doesn't have the economy to rebuild. And the Mutalists don't have to attack him. Yeah, he does. He absolutely does not have to. He can't force him. The spine crawlers are there. He has the cannons though, but for now, what Chai needs to do is kill as much as possible. He actually tries to not do fight this. With, he should not fight with that Archon. He kills the Archon and gets away, but... Yeah. Not against the cannons. There's yeah. just no need at this point. But you kill know the rest he... first, supply block him, make him get more talent. Nice, finding the now, sweet spot. Yeah. And now that the Archon's gone, he can find the sweet spot, and Huck is only mining from this base. He knows it. It's the last Nexus that's mining minerals right now. Obviously, minerals are less the issue than gas, especially since he can, of course, get the uh, Archons with making High Templar majority of uh, what he wants to build right now. Hawk is holding on by a thread and he knows if he can force an engagement at some point he is going to win it. But it's going to be difficult because this only is this is only going to happen if Shine makes a mistake now. And he's losing a few meters here but the thing is it just doesn't matter in the scheme of things since he's making 11 more right now. He's using that bank he built up. Well, he didn't have Larva. Archon's trying to find another angle here. Actually doing really well against these lanes. That one Archon needs to get back. That was scary. He's got to make sure he keeps all these Archons alive. They are his lifeline right now. 30 Mutalists and he's losing more Stalkers. He's going to lose everything here. He's going to lose the Gateways. The Cybernetics Core is once again going to be destroyed. This is 33 Mutalists already and he's not stopping. He's getting the armor upgrade now. He has plus two attack already. Bam! Another Nexus gone. And the Templar Archives is gone. No more Archons. And with no core, and as far as I can see, no Twilight Council. Yeah, no Twilight Council. He's he's going to have to rebuild his entire tech to be able to get more Templar. There's the Twilight Council starting now. The Archons are now together. He wants to try to snipe these Mutas. It's not going to be easy. There's two groups of Mutas now. He has that many. It's he just has 35. For he, he's desperately trying to get Antia, but the Cybernetics Core, he has to wait for it over and over again. And the Archons are just too slow yeah, to do anything. Too slow. Right yeah. now he actually hopes that there is a blink upgrade for Archons. That yeah. would save him the game. Certainly would. Maybe a Mothership Core would as well, but unfortunately these things, they do not exist. Twilight Council finishes. Doesn't have enough minerals to even make a Templar Archive right now. More and more Mutas coming out. Every 100 gas Shine has, he starts another Mutas, restarting that Carapace upgrade for the Mutas to help them against the plus three Archons as well. Shine, Shine, he can almost fight the Archons right now. That's how many Mews he has. Yeah. He can almost fight If he fight goes them. for a magic box, he could. But why take the risk? He doesn't have to. But yes, I agree. He could, at this point, he actually could try to do that. But only if he doesn't clump up. If he cl doesn't clump up, those Mewlists are going to have a great day and the game will be over in a split second. Yeah. He could... I mean, he's making another hatcher right now. He could even try to make roaches. The Archons can't get in. He's using the wall against him here. The Archons he's cannot go the and He's there gonna it get goes. it! Goodbye Nexus, that means no more. GG! Goodbye Nexus and goodbye Hawk. No more mining for the Canadian player. And it is Samsung Khan Shine who takes game number one in this best of three. Hawk playing an intense game that you can see him breathe a sigh there. Not a sigh of relief, but a sigh of, well that game's done. That was intense. I actually had a few opportunities there. I squandered them. Yeah. But you know, Huck makes a, a game that looks lost. And look you know, possible. You know, he's the only Pros player in a Pros Reserve in the late game against Muse who looks like he knows what's going on. Seriously. And guys, before we jump into the second game, if you're a fan of Fox, definitely make sure to check him out on a Twitter. Send him a tweet if you're watching his games live right now. He's at Low Ranger Chris. And of course, you can also tweet through the two of us at Caldo and at Foxwolf. And let us know if you think that Huck, if Huck could actually have won that game because it was really close with a few different decisions. He could maybe have taken it. So let us know what you think at Colin at Proxy Wolf. Send us a quick tweet and we'll have a look at this after the next yeah. game. Looking forward to hearing it. Gonna start very soon. 
Hack down. Can he take the best of three? Can he still win it? What do you think? Well, we'll have to find out. The next map is Neo Planet S, a really big map. We've seen Cross players win against Zergs on this map with really specific timings. We saw it already in this evening session of Code A. Will it happen again? What does Huck have planned? He has to play this map no matter what since it's game number two. What does Shine have planned? He wants to close out the series. Let's jump into Neo Planet S. I am Wolf with me as Calder, and this is the GSL Code A.